have watched the other videos I made, you probably already found that I emphasize pathophysiology and physiology a lot. That is because I feel, instead of memorizing, pharmacology can be learned through understanding. The fact is that before entering nursing school or during the first semester of nursing school, we have to take anatomy and physiology and pathophysiology. These prerequisites are what helping us make sense of nursing during our journey into a professional nurse. So before we get into individual diuretics, let's first quickly review nephron and how different diuretics work at the nephron. In this lecture, I wish to cover the following contents. The smallest or the most basic functional unit in the kidney is a nephron. Blood vessels and urinary collecting tubules make up the nephron. Here, let's have a quick review of the nephron. First, the circulation part. From the renal artery, a small arterial branches out and enters the nephron. This arterial is called afferent arterial, which is relatively larger in diameter comparing to afferent arterial. Between the afferent and efferent arterioles is the web of capillaries, glomerulus. Efferent arterial exit glomerulus and continues to go around the structure of nephron to facilitate filtration of waste, electrolytes, and water into the collecting tubules to form urine. In addition, arterial continues its journey to capillaries and then vein, finally merge into the renal vein. The urinary luminal part of a nephron starts with Bowman's capsule, which collects the filtrates from the glomerulus. Bowman's capsule extends to proximal convoluted tubule, then loop of Hanley, which continues to distal convoluted tubule, then entering to collecting tubule. Loop of Hanley can be further divided into descending loop of Hanley and ascending loop of Hanley. Now let's discuss each part of the nephron, finding out the movements of k-ions and ions, and what different diuretics work at different segments of a nephron. First, the proximal tubule. In proximal convoluted tubule, almost all glucose, bicarbonate, amino acid are reabsorbed from tubular lumen back into the blood. Reabsorption of bicarbonate is regulated by carbonic anhydrase intracellularly in the lumen cell and proximal tubule cells. Sodium is also reabsorbed in the proximal tubule. Two-thirds of sodium is pumped into the interstitial space by sodium-potassium adenosine triphosphatase pump, sodium-potassium ATP pump in short which hydrolyzes ATP to generate energy needed for transporting sodium and potassium k-ions. Organic acid, such as uric acid, some antibiotics, and majority of diuretics are secreted from the blood into the lumen at the mid-third proximal tubule. Diuretics secreted into the lumen here compete with uric acid for transportation. Organic bases, such as creatinine and choline, are excreted at the upper and middle proximal tubule. Water passes through back into the blood passively from the nephron lumen. Most diuretics work here on this proximal convoluted tubule. In addition, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors also work here. Now, we are going to explore the next segment in the nephron. The loop of Hanley. Loop of Hanley is further divided into ascending and descending loops. Electrolytes and water movements are quite different in descending and ascending loops of Hanley. We will treat them as two unique segments. When left the proximal convoluted tubule, the filtrated content is isotonic. As it passes through the descending loop of Hanley, Water is reabsorbed and concentration of salt contents increases up to three times, which means that the osmolarity of the luminal filtrate increases. The osmotic diuretics take effect here on the hypertonic filtrate in the descending lumen. 
Following descending loop of Henley is the ascending loop of Henley. Ascending loop of Henley is the major site for salt reabsorption and at the same time it is impermeable to water. The sodium, potassium, and chloride co-transporter moves these three cations into interstitial fluid, and then these three cations are reabsorbed via secondary active transportation into the bloodstream. Magnesium and calcium are removed from the luminal filtrate, and these two cations enters the interstitial space through a paracellular route. In addition, 25% of tubular sodium chloride returns to the interstitial fluid. Thus, ascending loop of Henle is the diluting site of the nephron. Diuretics working on ascending loop of Henle produces the most powerful diuresis. Loop diuretics are the example. The fourth segment in the nephron is the distal convoluted tubule. The luminal cells here is also impermeable to water. Reabsorption of sodium and calcium is continued here. 10% of sodium chloride in the lumen is actively absorbed via sodium chloride transporter. Calcium passes through a channel, then sodium-calcium exchanger into interstitial fluid. At the same time, calcium is excreted into lumen as influenced by parathyroid hormone. Thazide diuretics work here by affecting the sodium chloride transporter. The collecting duct and tubule is the last part of a nephron. Two hormones regulating the reabsorption and excretion of K ions and ions here are aldosterone and antidiuretic hormone. The principal cells of collecting tubule transport sodium, potassium, and water, while intercalated cells excreted hydrogen. Sodium first enters the principal cells through epithelial sodium channels. Then, it is reabsorbed into the bloodstream through sodium-potassium adenosine triphosphatase pump, sodium-potassium ATP pump in short. Aldosterone promotes synthesis of sodium channels at the epithelial level, and it facilitates synthesis of sodium-potassium adenosine triphosphatase pump intracellularly. Therefore, aldosterone increases both reabsorption of sodium and excretion of potassium. Antidiuretic hormone binds to its receptors here to facilitate water reabsorption. In other words, Aldosterone moves the electrolytes, and ADH moves water. Aldosterone antagonists slash potassium-sparing diuretics work right here at the collecting duct and tubule, stopping reabsorption of sodium and water, as well as prohibiting excretion of potassium. This is a diagram that depicts what we have just discussed in this lecture, the movements of fluid and electrolytes hormones and their corresponding segments in the nephron. Finally, the specific diuretics and their target sites of a nephron. Thank you for spending time with me. I look forward to discuss various groups of diuretics and their representative drugs with you, starting next lecture.